but I feel like men were able to separate sex and love and emotion. Because I've had sex with dudes I don't care anything about. Like, if I've had mm. sex with a dude, and if he got hit by a tractor the next day, I'm like, oh, damn. So I think that what I'm thinking about is that the, the dynamic is the same. I mean, couldn't you have a man and he, he, yo, that's my man. Like, what makes it so compartmentalized? Because, because men can separate sex and emotions, and I don't think yeah, I don't but think. Why a can't lot they do it when they're with women? No, it's not the men's part. It's the women who I don't think can do it. Yo, what's up, Square Pit Brigade? On this episode, we have comedian Akeem Woods. Is here, and we discuss the dyna- dynamics of gay hookup and how it relates to heterosexual hookups. Swinging. We talk why women can't separate sex from love and why men can't say separate sex from love um this is a good one man uh really different perspective at a time when i think that we have to have a wider understanding of what's going on out there sure man and, it it's, all some, kind and, of and it's a good conversation you know when we talk about the differences where, where men and female perspectives you know in straight relationships and the, the different things that happen also uh we continue over at patreon if you love the show and you love what we're talking about we continue over at patreon.com uh, man slash manschool202 where we do the bonus content and we do uh, listener mail and we talk technique and stuff. And also, we have all the old episodes. We're starting to upload those uh, of Beige Phillip, the early days of Manschool202, starting from episode one. We're uploading them. They're going to be exclu- exclusively on Patreon. Yeah. So uh, go sign up and support us. Patreon.com slash manschool202 if you want to hear the classic stuff. And also, if you want a consultation from me, you can email me at advicefromharry at gmail.com. And me, you can get DanteAnywhere.com. Click on consult. Y'all know how to get me. Let's get into it. I'm not an alpha male. I'm not a beta male either. I'm just a better man. Better man. Well, put your happiness first, because if you don't, they won't. Yo, 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 what up? GYBBWDD, what would Dante do to sexual revolution? Being podcasted, and I am excited. Um, this is uh, another special show. I know I've said that uh, 500 times before, but this time I absolutely mean it. Um, we're approaching 600 times. We're getting there, buddy. Yeah, we're getting there. We are getting there. What's going on, How Are you good? Oh, living the living the high life, my friend. Trying to live each moment. Trying to just so busy fitting in all the great stuff that's happening. Right. Still having a tough time keeping these alligators down, man. Difficult, difficult. We got a a friend of the show, friend of the family, friend of the friend of the friend um, coming off of Pride Week, kicking it live. Uh, Give it up for our King Woods. What's up? And it's Pride Month. We get a month, not a week. Uh, Pride. All right. Well, okay. (laughs) <laughs> I mean, I've never known you not to celebrate. Well, you are yeah, pride. You are prideful. Twelve months a year, I can <laughs> I know, but admit. this, but this one is just like a. This one gives me more money. Oh, all right, oh fair yeah. enough. Fair enough. Fair enough. You know, I don't like to be in nobody's pockets. So, I, I, thanks for sharing that with me. You know. What's yeah, well, you know, there's, there's not a lot of gay black comics. There's like five of us. So, is that five? No, but the ones that do it for a living, I think there's like seven or eight. Uh yeah 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 it's a little low. Well, it is very. So I mean, it is what it is. I mean, more money for us though. So I ain't mad at it. Yeah, you ain't trying to clog up the, the works. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> it's funny. I met a dude uh this weekend who was like, "Yeah, I'm a comic and I own a business." And I was, "Yeah, all right, whatever, motherfucker. I, you know, that's all I need you to do is, you know, have some more incompetent motherfuckers on stage so I could." And clog up the works. What was I, your uh, business? Yeah, I ran into. I I saw it. there was this chick I follow on Instagram, black chick who kind of she she spit science, telling telling chicks to what for, and then yeah. uh, finally, she, I, so I guess she's doing stand up now, and she put up a stand up clip, and I was like, oof, you should have stuck to TikTok, me. You should have stuck to TikTok. Where was she doing stand up? Was in the in the city? I don't know. It was just a. It was just a. I didn't see her live. You know, I didn't. Not you know, I didn't go see her. But I mean, I saw clips of her on a like she was doing like commentary about to black women. Like bitch, you always chasing a man and this motherfucker because you don't want to do shit for your man anyway. Does she have a big following? Yeah, yeah. You bitches want the. You want a wedding. You want the ring, but you don't want to suck a motherfucker dick. 
after you get the ring. <laughs> like, you know, she, she, she is just, this the stand up or the, t- the TikTok? No, commentary? this was this is her TikTok commentary. Mm-hmm. And then I watched her her stand up and I was like, oh, man. Well, God. the problem is the Internet people can only you only can make so much money on the Internet. There's like a there's a cap eventually. So even the person with the most followers, you only can make so much Internet money. Right. But comedy, once you like stand up money is infinite because you can do bigger and bigger venues. You can charge yeah. ticket prices, whatever you want. You could charge for meet and greet. You could charge for merchandise. You could charge like but you got to actually no- have an act. though. That's well, the no, thing. you do. But these people don't care about that. Yeah. 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 So there's, there's no cap to doing stand up. So that's why a lot of these TikTok people, or Internet people who aren't good at comedy, but they're good at the Internet stuff. They realize that they only can make so much money on the internet, but they they, they can make an and they gotta monetize it, find a way to monetize it, right? Yeah, so then that's why the, that's why these terrible comics are start going on tour because they're awful. But yeah, it was they got a following. Yeah, it was bad. It was bad. But anyway, how you been, man? How was Pride? It was out, good. Was, I didn't really do Atlanta, a lot this year. Was Atlanta or no? No, I didn't do Atlanta this year. I did Orlando and Tampa. Well, how was that? It was amazing. All the shows were packed. They were also they were like sold out. It was fun. I didn't really like do any partying or hanging out afterwards because I've just had a really busy ass month in general. Really? So it was actually kind of like a boring pride. Not boring, but like a way more laid back pride. Yeah, subdued way more subdued pride. than my usual whole antics. But so I, yeah, because you were you were definitely uh, touting the that you was going to turn up last time I saw you. Yeah, and I didn't do any of that. But, I uh, mean, I had a lot of fun the last Pride. I probably had too much fun last Pride. So, I think I needed, like, a year to settle the fuck down. So, uh, I didn't do a lot besides the shows. Okay. All right. Cool. Any any uh, any uh last-minute hookups, or did you just go back to the room? and? No, I didn't hook up in Tampa. I hooked up with this dude this morning, but I didn't hook up with, like... Yeah, but you home now, right? Yeah, I'm home now. Yeah, yeah, this is my yeah, that apartment. Don't, that don't count. <laughs> yeah, no, I didn't hook up. I didn't hook up. I could have. The show ended and I went back to my hotel. And my hotel was like right by the beach, too. It was like really mm-hmm. nice in Tampa. Mm-hmm. And I went back to my hotel and I started watching this TV show. Next thing you know, I was passed out. I had a flight at 10 a.m. So it just didn't happen. How many days did you spend out there? Just Friday, Saturday. Okay. Uh, I was supposed to get there. I was originally going to hook up with somebody. I was supposed to get there earlier. But Delta, but there was weather problems with fucking Orlando, yeah. so Delta had to change my flight. I had to change mm-hmm. my rental car. I was so you got cock blocked by Delta, then that's basically what yeah. happened. Yeah, but they did upgrade me to first class and flew me directly to Tampa, so it all worked out. It was just like annoying. Nice, nice. Yeah, Let me. Annoying. I wanted to ask you something. I was thinking about this, and I was thinking because every time you we, we're on Godfrey's show together, and we're talking about the issues that we have with women you uh you you look so foreign from it like like why would they do that you're like <laughs> because i've never ever pursued women romantically like right. not even i'm gold like i've never had sex with a woman i've never even seen women as you, sex go, go ahead. you can say it i'm gold star yeah gold star gay but like <laughs> I've just never Explain seen Explain what that is, though, for people who don't know what Gold Star Gay is. Oh, it means you've never done straight shit. Yeah. So I've never yeah. I've never had sex with a woman. I've never been sexual with a woman. I've never... Fa- I mean, I find women tr- attractive, but never on a sexual level. Like, I think mm-hmm. a lot of women are gorgeous, but if they took off their clothes, my dick wouldn't move. I find that hard to believe, considering you're wearing an I Heart Eggplant t-shirt right now. I know. <laughs> this is my, this my go-to never? Go hat. <laughs> But um, so I so when people talk about the relationships with women and and the problems that you guys have and blah 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 blah, I just can't relate to it because I don't have those problems. I'm fucking dudes. Well, lucky you, <laughs> lucky you. Because I mean, you, you guys just can fuck dudes if you want. They're out there. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I can't. If, I don't if, think I can. If only. <laughs> it just doesn't biologically work for me. I, I don't feel you. I, I mean, I get it. But yeah, so I don't relate to it. So normally when y'all talking about all that shit, I'm just off in La La Land. Let me ask you this. What is your thought on it when we, we talk about the stuff that we talk about? Give me an example and I'll okay. tell you. So for instance. What are you talking um, about on the, show, on the show, on Godfrey's? Um, for instance, you go out on a date with somebody and 
she has an attitude like you're you're paying for dinner, you pay you picked her up, you and she kind of has an attitude, or she's not being uh, how about this? She's not being talkative, like you're talking and it feels like you're pulling teeth, almost like yeah. she doesn't want to be there. Like yeah. um if is that a is there ever a situation like that where you would deal with that where somebody is like somebody said they want to hook up, you meet up with them and then they're not you know it doesn't really happen often i've been on bad dates before but then i just leave what was the what was the what when you say a bad date what do you mean by that i went on a date with this dude who was really hot but his hotness didn't outweigh his boringness right so like he was this hot but he was like that boring uh okay so i was like oh yeah you're not hot enough to be this Born like if he was a little bit more hotter, I could have feigned into the conversation. <laughs> but he just wasn't hot enough to be that boring, so I just I just left. So what did you what do you do? Just like I'm gonna go or, or? oh no, I mean sometimes I don't like being rude or whatever, so I usually make up some shit. But sometimes I'll be honest. But in this particular instance, I just texted um I texted one of my best friends. I'm like, yo, call me in like ten minutes. Uh -huh. And she called me, and she knows the game because I've done it a million times. Right. So she'll call me and act like she's like locked out of the apartment. Nigga, mm -hmm. I live alone. I've lived alone for years. Right, but, right. but they don't know that. Right. So right. she'll call me and be like, yo, and I'll answer on speakerphone. So she'll call, and we, she, she should win an Oscar because the way she does it is great. <laughs> she'll call, and she'll just start yelling at me. She's like, I'm locked out of the apartment. I got to get to work. I'm going to be late. I can't be late again. Blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, okay, I'm coming, I'm coming, I'm coming. And then I'm, and then I, so basically I'm just like, I gotta go. My roommate, she's locked at her apartment. I gotta bring her the key. Stupid. And now, I act do, like I'm do they ever go? Do you want me to come with you? Can I, can I? Help? Oh, yeah. They have once before. And I'm like, no, it's gonna be a whole thing. I don't want you to see. I don't want that. It's gonna be a whole thing. Uh -huh. And they're like, oh, okay. Well, then let's, let's hang out later. I'm like, yeah, definitely, man. Let's hang out later. And then I just ghost them. Okay. I've, I've done that a few times, but sometimes I'm honest too. Sometimes. Lately, I've been more honest. Like, that happened, like, two years ago. Lately, I've just been like, oh, yeah, dude, I'm not feeling this. I'm going to leave. And then I just get up and leave. But it doesn't happen often. It's only happened, like, maybe nine times. Mm. All right. But the interesting thing about that is you can... The problem with most straight relationships or guys pursuing it is they don't do that. They'll put up with the boringness for the hotness because in their eyes they don't have a ton of options like well the, that's the yeah. reason why the reason why you guys i feel like have to do that is because you have to put up with stuff to get sex like when i go on a date i'm not looking for sex i'm looking to get to know someone and we're probably gonna have sex anyway but i'm looking mm -hmm. to be either be in a relationship or be a friend with benefit or be something more like so more you're, you're, you're going in there with a good faith attitude I'm trying to see what this person or if this yeah, because I'm generally trying. I'm interested in them outside of sex, mm -hmm. but a lot of times I think straight men go into dates to have sex because that's like the steps for y'all. Yeah, y'all mm -hmm. like a step for the typical straight relationship. I imagine is you meet a girl, you flirt with her, you ask her, you DM or whatever, you go on a few dates, and then you guys have sex. Mm -hmm. And gay men are complete opposite. I've hooked up with a nigga and I didn't know his name until afterwards. Uh huh. So I hooked up with two people who I don't know their names. Right. So like, like I want, I once hooked up with this dude and really hot Asian dude. And we hooked up and it was great. And then he noticed that I had, I'm a big like anime fan. And he noticed that I have like a, a, a one piece rug and like I've had to be what too. I'm not going to show you the apartment, but I've had to be uh, right. And he noticed I had a bunch of anime hats. And he's like, oh, are you a fan of this anime? I'm like, oh, I'm a huge fan. He's like, yo, they just, a movie just came out. Do you want to go watch it? I'm like, oh, dope. We already had sex. Right, yeah, right. I didn't even know his name. We just already had sex, right, and it right. turned out we had something in common. So you then did we a meet cute movie. after fucking. Is the meet cute happen? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So then we went on a we went on on what you guys would consider a date after we had already fucked. So we fucked, and then we realized that we liked the same type of anime. And then afterwards, we went to see a movie, and then we fucked again. Mm. Now uh, let me ask you this: the uh, so so is sex? Would you say sex is kind of? the baseline anyway you're hooking up to have sex sex is the easiest if you're gay and you can't have sex that's just because you have either crazy high standards or you're just lazy mm. because having sex is an e it's I, I mean grinders here i'm gonna some dude's gonna come over and suck my dick in like an hour mm. 
Just boom, <laughs> boom, boom, boom. Yeah. Swipe, swipe. And he's hot. So, I mean, we might end up like getting along or whatever. But if he doesn't, then he just, we hook up, he leaves, and I continue on my day. And there's no, like, there's no jealousy or no insecurity about that at all. Not from, I mean, I'm sure there are in certain places, but I but think I'm, as a whole. I guess what I'm saying as a whole, culturally. No, nah, not really. Not really. Is it why is it because it's so because so it's a lot it's a weird thing because I know people who who fully swing, right? Yeah. And they, you know, and it's all cool. Somebody's fucking my wife and I'm fucking their wife, or maybe I just watch my wife get fucked, or yeah. like crazy shit like that. And I've always been kind of a dude where like I, you know, I've soft swang, like I've slept with other women or whatever. Yeah. But I never never was in a situation where I'm gonna let somebody fuck my girl or whatever like that. Well, I think the reason why it's I think with in straight relationships, it's present it's kind of becomes possessive in in both yeah, well, that's what I'm women. thinking about. Why do you think that is? Why well, what because do you men are like, yo, that's my men are like, yo, that's my woman, and women are just like, yo, that's my man. And that's right. just kind of like the dynamic between straight couples. Mm-hmm. But for gay couples, we're just like, I mean, we feel the same way too. Like, that's my man, that's my man, or whatever. But I think we're just more fluid, like sexually, because I, I think men, or it, I don't think, I, I can't speak for women because I don't obviously don't know anything, but I feel like men were able to separate sex and love and emotion. Because I've had sex with dudes I don't care anything about. Like, if I've had mm-hmm. sex with a dude, and if he got hit by a tractor the next day, I'm like, oh, damn. Man, like, tractor, a tractor's slow, too. I like, mean, <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying, like, it wouldn't affect me because I'm I like, that's just a dude know. I had sex with. But I've also had sex with dudes that I generally like, and we became good <laughs> friends or whatever, and that's and that's different. And I, you can, we can separate the two. So I, th- so like for instance, if you're if you have a like I have a friend who has a husband, and they're open. So mm-hmm. when my friend's out of town, he can sleep with other men, and when mm-hmm. when and, and vice versa, they can right, right, whatever mm-hmm. they want. What they just have to tell each other. But it is they've been together for a long ass time, and it works because they know. That yo, you hooked up with some dude in fucking Wyoming. That was nothing. It meant nothing. It was you just fucked a dude because you were horny, and I wasn't in Wyoming. <laughs> but I, I mean the the. So I think that what I'm thinking about is the 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 dynamic is the same. I mean, couldn't you have a man and he he yo, that's my man. Like, what makes it so compartmentalized? Because, because men can separate sex and emotions, and I don't think yeah, I don't. But think why a can't lot they of- do it when they're with women? No, it's not the men's part. It's the women who I don't think can do it. No, the men don't want, men don't want nobody fucking their girl. I think he means at the end of, on the individual level. Uh, yeah, I mean that's a different thing. But uh, men, just like men hooking up, can separate. Oh, sex. okay, I get what you're saying. Yeah. Because men, straight men, are cool with fucking other women, but they don't want the woman to do the same. Exactly. Oh yeah, exactly. that's misogyny, nigga. Yeah, that's all that is. Okay, but I mean, (laughs) why can't you have misogyny when it comes to men? I mean, because it's two men. Yeah, but that that doesn't stop the 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 feeling of misogyny, the selfishness, the the because because men. I feel like men feel like if they're with someone, they own in a sense that's their pussy. Two men don't feel that way. I don't feel like when I fuck a dude, I'm like that. I'm not like that's my dick. And vice versa, he's not like that's my ass. Like we don't, for the most part, we but don't I, feel I guess that. I'm way. asking why. I, I I get you saying what you're saying, but I'm saying so. So what's interesting about this podcast is right. We we started out basically. I mean, when we, I'm you know, like first of all, I was doing this podcast with Patrice in 2006. Yeah, we started doing this podcast what 2010. 2012 yeah. 2012 so we've been doing it fucking for 10 years and yeah. as things to, to be honest in 2010 we probably wouldn't be having this conversation openly in the way that we do yeah. that we're having it right now right um we definitely wouldn't have had it the, that way in 2006 when i was doing it on the radio so yeah. so a lot of the principles that i knew to be that that I was applying to situations based on looking at overall patterns, right? I mean, so a lot of the philosophies that we expound 
or that we talk about here when we're talking about heterosexual relationships and sometimes even even in in uh you know LGBT relationships as well. So we've counseled lesbians and 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 even gay dudes in, to a certain extent in, in, in some ways. But the principles that we expound that I you know that I've come up with most of all come from this patterns. Because yeah. you see these patterns over and over again, the same things over and over again. Here's an interesting thing. Every time, like you talk about, uh, you know, sex in a gay couple, the prerequisite is kind of, the I guess the, the harmonic bed that exists is y'all fucking. Like that's yeah. going to happen. That'll happen if you don't like each other, if you do like each other, if you don't. Right. Yeah. But um, it, it, there's still this this uh, these ideology that i've been able to apply and change it from from masculine and feminine to dominant and submissive do you know what i mean like yeah it it kind of it, it it pans out the same way however you want to say something well i think what it what it ultimately comes down to because there's a difference in from my understanding there's a difference in relationships between gay men and gay women lesbians they have a completely different dynamic yeah. so the dynamic is usually gay men are more open to the sex part because it's two men and i think they just are comfortable with the deal of we get to have sex this is what we want this is what we prefer we focus on that first and there's not another party kind of sullying that deal gay men get to do what straight men would do if women didn't say no to it you know like if if there wasn't a woman there going no, I don't just want okay, it to be but sex. are we are we assuming but where does the possessiveness comes from when I what I'm saying is so my my thing is I think the they just accept it and go, this is a better deal. Like the, the, the pluses outweigh the minuses to a degree, I think I would guess. Let me because ask you I, this. Is it is it the, the amount of availability? Like when you when you first came out and you first started becoming sexually active. Was were you kind of like like if you had sex with a dude, did you like him and get jealous and feel possessive? Not even from the from the jump. Nah, not at no, all. never because it was just because I I was just and I'd say it was just sex, but a lot of times it was like yeah, I think it was just sex. Like I'm not, I'm not like I am a I think men are able to separate sex and emotion. So if I've been attached to somebody. Because I'm a man, I know how other men are. And I know I can have sex without emotion. So I know another man can as well. So if I'm dating somebody and he wants to go out and have sex with somebody else, I don't, I don't take that personal. I'm just like, oh, yeah, you're horny and you want a different type of person. Like, because I think we all like it what we sense. like. It makes it sense. sense. Like sometimes, and I'm and I'm a decent looking dude, but so I'm not, I don't have abs and I don't have like the certain things that other and I'm five foot seven. So maybe one day you want to fuck a tall nigga. I'm always going to be five foot seven. So right. if you want to fuck a six foot four nigga. I ain't mad at you. Go fuck the six foot four nigga and then come back home. Or well, we can fuck the six foot four nigga together. But like, mm. I'm aware that as a, as a dude, no one wants to just be with one person. Like you, you what if you're with an Asian dude and you're like, Oh shit, I really like Dominican dudes. Am I supposed to, expect you just does not fuck does not fuck anyone else except for like no i think that's lo that's lunacy so like of course if this dude wants to go fuck a f six for four nigga i'm like okay cool bring back snacks i'm gonna sit here and be five for seven versus sort of in lesbian relationships my understanding is always i've, I've dated a couple uh girls who are bisexual so they kind of tell me what it's like the differences and yeah. so the thing i hear is that the the joke within the lesbian community is uh, what do you bring on a first date? You know, oh, you haul truck yeah. Yeah, because yeah. they are ready to settle down like immediately. Mm. Like this is a relationship. Like I like you. It's like when you're a kid, you're wearing my pledge pin. Now we're in yeah. a relationship type of thing. And it's a, because it's two women and there's yeah. a different set of emotions and requirements there. And that's the deal that they make that they like. So yeah. it makes so it makes sense. So it, if you think about it. Obviously, no one's a monolith, so this doesn't work universal. Yeah, we get that. I mean, we're we're but, we're talking about the generalization. Yeah, but if you in take, order if you to escalate about, if you, the dialogue, if you take about the if you think about the the three ex the two extremes, it makes logical sense, like from a scientific perspective, right? So men are more promiscuous. 
women or whatever the opposite of promiscuous are. So if you get take two men Monogamous. together, you get two promiscuous motherfuckers you take right. two women you get two monogamous motherfuckers you take a man and a woman you get what the fuck y'all got yeah I, I mean i get what you're saying but it doesn't make sense because men tend to be possessive no matter what i mean part of part of your masculinity well i'm saying is, it's not no matter what because it doesn't happen with gay people well you're right you're right so i guess what i'm saying is in every other situation, a man, like you could have a man who could be bi, right? And be possessive with his woman, right? But then go around and fuck other guys. I'll tell I think I know what it is, Dante. I think I know what it is. It just stumbled upon me. I think it's because when it comes to male males pursuing women, once you get a woman, or this is the normal thinking, if you don't follow our podcast, it's you work so hard to get that woman that you may never get. Most guys feel like I'll never get another one again versus the gay scene is just so it's the value. Pick, you're it's saying. the value. Pick up the phone. I mean, I'm not the value of the person, but the option. No, like, no, but like you're talking can, about the value that's supply and demand. Supply the, the, and the demand. Supply yeah. yeah, there's so... no there's no there's no shortage of dick. Literally, yeah, yeah, yeah. the you dick market our, is high. Yeah, you turn there's, on grinder. There's a lot of dick. Yeah, y'all, y'all drop the bottom of that motherfucker. There's, there's dick is dicks worthless. Their dick is worthless, right? Yeah, <laughs> y'all, there's y'all a dude, fucked up the whole. There's a dude 200 feet away who's sucking dick. If I like, if you, if I go to his house right now, it was like my dick 200 feet away. Mm. So that's great. Yeah. all I think is that's the length of a an NHL hockey rink is 200 feet. That's yeah. I don't know why that. <laughs> Like it's, from one end of the goal to the other, you could get your dick sucked. Blue line. Yeah, blue right line? now. That's if I, if I put on some, if I put on like, if I put on like some shorts and walk outside, yeah, can be hooking and up in ten minutes. I think mm. that's part of it. Is that's why men get it's possessive, the and not, not in the gay community. Like I'm never gonna. I just wrangled her in. I tricked her. I conned her. I convinced yeah. her. Uh, I brushed my teeth. I cleaned my apartment. Mm-hmm. I, I can't do this every, you know, every day. Yeah, that's and what, for us, it's like, oh, I click three buttons. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and I get you. I get. I guess it's the, the supply is the supply that me. It's funny because I, you know, I'm. I always when I was like 23 years old, and I, and I was I was still stripping then, right? And this chick comes up to me and she says, "Um, let me have your number. I I want to hook up with you." And I was like, All right, "Here's my card. Whatever." I gave her the card. So yeah. she called me. Never told me your name. And then she says to me, "What? Well, I don't know if I ever told this story, Harry, but they, mm, they, yeah. uh, she goes, um, I got a, I got a, um, I got a suite at the, at the Hilton in the city. Just, this is the room. Boom, 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 boom. So I hooked, you know, jumped on my bike, went to the fucking, I was on my, I jumped on my bike, went to the Hilton, said the name, went up. Shit was all in lingerie and everything. And we hooked up and, uh, and I was like, well, what's, what's your name again? And she was like, that doesn't matter. Yeah. And I was like, well, what do you what do you do? What do you do? And she was like, you know, but I'm 23. So I'm like, fuck it. I'm in the I'm in the Hilton. I'm in the suite. Right. Yeah. She wants to suck my dick and fuck me. Why, you know, why not? Right. Um, And then she, you know, we fucked everything. We let, and then I'm, you know, I'm getting up to leave. And I go, yo, what's your name, though? And she won't tell me her name. And I'm like, yeah, yeah. Oh, whatever. She says, yeah. but I will be in touch with you again. This yeah. happened like three or four times. Around the fifth time, I was like, bitch, you're going to tell me your name. Otherwise, I'm not. I'm. You're not going to objectify me. Yeah. And it, you know what I mean? Like, it just it like me fucking her was something that was so available to me. Yeah. You know, full service. It didn't matter. What really mattered to me is who this person was that that she didn't think I was worthy of even giving her identity or telling her name or anything like it was just like I was objectified. And because I was objectified, I didn't care about the sex I, I because wanted... I was a rarity for you. Exactly. Because you could get the, yeah. because it became like it's just sort of like a sales pitch of like, so wait, how, oh, how did, you, did you get her name? No. That's no. hilarious. <laughs> no, never. So if y'all, how many there, times did y'all fuck? Five. Well, well, I mean, I bitched about it around five. I showed yeah. up again around six. My, I think the seventh time I was like, I don't, I don't want to do this anymore. Because she was, like, she was. I'm guessing she was fine. Yeah, she was fine as hell. And then, and yeah. she was full service. 
all inputs, like yeah. do whatever you want to do. You know, it was. Sorry, Akeem, have you ever has there ever been a situation where you were looking for love, where it, where there was somebody you wanted more with? Or, or do you, um, no. Or do just... Oh, and only because if I'm looking for something more, I go into it looking for something more. I have a separate phone. I have, I even I have a drug bar on stage, but I have a dick phone, which is this phone. Mm -hmm. And this is only like for hookups. So like grinders on here, a bunch of dick pics, sex, sex, sex. And mm -hmm. then I have, and then my regular phone, there's no dick pics or naked pictures. There's not gay, no gay stuff on here. But mm -hmm. I have dating gaps on here, like Tinder and, and Hinge and whatever. So if mm -hmm. I match with somebody on this phone, I'm looking to go on a date and get to know him and, and maybe things lead on to something else, blah, 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 blah. But if I met, if I talk to someone on this phone, it's all sex. And rarely does someone from this phone go over to this phone. And why is that just your rule or is that? It just it's just because the people on those apps that are downloaded on this phone for the most part are, are also looking for what I'm looking for. A quick mm -hmm. hookup. I have a few I have a few regular dudes who I fuck like regularly, like when they're in town or whatever. Mm -hmm. But we also know it's just fucking because that's all we want it to be. Like I have a dude who will just who works like a few blocks away. And sometimes he'll just text me and we'll fuck on his on his work break and he'll go back out to do whatever the fuck he's doing at work. I don't even know I don't even I don't even know his, I don't even know his name. Like I, I and he might he might be with a girl or something. I don't care. I mean he might have a, a wife or whatever live his dreams, but we fuck whenever he's in town and he texts me and if I'm happy to be in town, I'm like, yeah, come over and we'll hook up. And then people that I go on dates with, those are people that are on this phone and we we go on dates and hang out and we hook up as well, but like it's going to lead somewhere in theory. It but hasn't it, yet because I don't use that phone that much. But but do you understand that you understand that you are creating those parameters? I remember I used to sleep with this call girl, right? And uh, years ago, I used to sleep with this call girl, and she she was like, you know, she, she like she started liking me, and then she was like, I only want, I only we're only gonna have anal sex from now on. And it was like in her mind, she had compartmentalized the fact that she didn't have when she was working, she used her vagina to work, but her her anus was yeah, personal. Yeah, yeah you know yeah. what I'm saying? But you know, you imagine me, a 20 year old dude going, Yeah, whatever, you know, like yeah. whatever. But I mean, you know, it's like it's almost like people create these. But I mean, I think people do that same thing in in uh open relationships. A lot of times people people um will like open relationships like hey you can fuck whoever you want but you can't you can't kiss them or you can fuck whatever you want or you can top for them but you can't bottom for them or vice versa whatever it is that they're into it it, it always fluctuates but a lot mm -hmm. of open relationships have that same thing is like hey you can fuck whoever you want but don't kiss them or hey you can fuck whatever you want but don't so and so and they mm -hmm. agree upon whatever they agree upon and then they right. and it works for them because some and some people don't have any little parameters. Like, hey, you can fuck whoever you want and do whatever you want, just not in the city. So they mm -hmm. live in New York. It's like when you're on tour, fuck whoever you want, but don't fuck niggas in New York. Uh -huh. So I mean, the priority, the the thing, it, I think, I think for gay people, they all have a variety of of things you can and can't do. But I think if you sit down and and have have that conversation, I think it works because you sit down, you're like, hey, this 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 this, and then you're like, okay, cool, I can go out and have fun and do whatever I want. I just can't do those things. Now is that let me ask you this because I'm thinking about this in terms of because what what I'm talking about on this podcast a lot is about kind of having those conversations, being honest about these conversations. So, I mean, I'm, I'm you, you know, I don't mean to, but I'm using you as a model in terms of um, how I almost think it should work. I mean, not, not I mean, not, I'm not talking about just your lifestyle, but I'm just saying. The, uh, the importance of the honesty of it is really what matters. I mean, people will put up with a lot of things if you just, you'd be surprised what people will say yes to if yeah. you ask them. Because sometimes people aren't mad that you had sex with another woman or another man. They're mad that you lied about it. A lot of the times that's what they're really mad about. I mean, of course, they're mad that the infidelity because you had sex with another woman. Of course, yes. But I think the main part is not only do you have sex with another woman, you 
you did it behind my back and you and you and you made me look like a fool. Well, part of well, the infidelity would be the lying part because you're exactly. pretending that you have a monogamous relationship when you're not interested in having a monogamous relationship. Exactly. Yeah, but I don't I don't even think the anger comes from the lying so much. I mean, because, you know, very rarely do I come across people that don't lie. Now, I don't always come across people that lie maliciously, like where somebody would lie simply to get ahead of the game. But I think sometimes people lie to the same extent people will lie to um, to 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 not offend people. Yeah. Like to not to, to avoid confrontation or av avoid a conversation that they may not be comfortable with or, or they're not they're not built to have. And so they'll lie and tell a little white lies so that they can do that. But I mean, I think the biggest problem is not so much the lie. I think the problem is the insecurity of people thinking, thinking, wow, you had sex with this person. You you value them more. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's a it's an insecurity thing more than anything. But I think it's because they equate sex, the sex you have with yes. them to the same sex you had with that stranger that works at IHOP. Yeah. yeah. Like they think they're like, well, when we have sex, you're making love. So you fuck that IHOP bitch, you made love. And it's like, no, she's an IHOP bitch. She sucked right. my dick in the back counter and right. I went home. Like it wasn't any, it was nothing romantic about it at all. She's right. a bitch that works at IHOP. Well, Dante, but, Dante, it also goes back to what you were talking about. And we, we haven't talked about it in a while, but the instinctual drive and yeah. what the instinctual drive of what men and women is, as you have you said many times. And, you know, we've read the uh, Christopher Ryan wrote a great book book called uh, Sex, Sex at, Dawn. at Dawn and the Red Queen. And the, yeah. yeah, there's a bunch of good books about yeah. about the instinct. And, and maybe that that might be it, too, is the fact that we don't see men. Men don't see men as immortality you know like so there's a there's an exchange that men go through in in heterosexual relationships where i am i am transferring um resources money and resources for your womb in a sense like the, your dna giving me i mean i'm i'm not a religious person but i believe the true immortality is the fact that you have children and yeah. when you have children, your DNA lives in that person. I mean, we're literally it's weird because they're literally talking about how now there's a diff. They found out a difference because black people as a whole don't have Neanderthal blood in them where white people do have Neanderthal blood. So in the in the extinctual growth of the races, right, or whatever, there's a different DNA in white people that's, that doesn't exist in black people. So black people are usually a hundred percent homo homo sapiens, homo sapiens, homo sapiens, and where so there's a, this this instinctual thing that I think people don't even take, and and so it's it could be that we don't. Well, you that's, you you talk that's not about a concern. The drive is the instinctual drive is to keep the species going like any other animal. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And so the the men need to procreate that's why we have a billion sperm and women need to have child to, to yeah. just in general to populate and that's what the the instinct there is how can i find well, i also someone? think that's why there's gay niggas anyway why you, why do you say that because um to po population control because i think i think the way si i mean i think the way science mm -hmm. works is if everyone like pussy and every woman like dick, the population it, would be out of control. I it mean, it's already problem, out of control, yeah. but it would be out of control on another level because that means every man would be trying to reproduce and every woman would be trying to reproduce in the, the, the normal way or the regular way. So I think the reason why gay people even exist is because is a nature type. That's so you think, think it's you think it's a nature. It's a it's a it's an adaptation. Yeah, to, to not overtake the resources because I've resources. never been I've never been sexually attracted to women, like not right. in any sense of the word. So I've never had that instinct to try to reproduce. And then I know I know a lot of women. I know some lesbians who are the same way. They've never been attracted to men, and they've never had that in, in that uh want to reproduce. Um, one second, I got a, a plug in my um yeah yeah no worries. 
Yeah, I, I, I mean, y'all can still hear me. I just got to plug in. Yeah, my that's own. a that's an interesting <laughs> concept to even think that there's a that you know what we consider this you know at what they're trying to act as if is a new phenomenon, which is really not a phenomenon. I mean, science has always kind of said this over and over again that there's always been you know even in nature, even in animals, there is gay and gay tendencies in animals as well exactly. there is homosexuality in animals yeah yeah so yeah. Um, i guess it would be homosexuality would it i don't know what you'd call it uh but... homo is same sexual yeah could be yeah, yeah could, would it be yeah oh, yeah I don't know. it would i don't it know the pro- pro- same sex homo, homo is same and sexuality is sex so it's same sex but if but that has always existed in nature and i mean we're we're finding so much about this we're, we're 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 finding about this in so much yeah i mean that's why i think it's genetic because yeah. i think it's like it's it's society's way of having some type of population control mm-hmm. because if, if you think about it the numbers they're already getting bad but it would be yeah it'd be astronomical if there were no gay people so yeah. every man wanted to have and it wouldn't even make sense numbers wise because like there's more I, I, there's more women than men or something like like it wouldn't even make it yeah. be it yeah. be it would be bad. If, well, if women live longer. Get women live longer than men. Oh, my yeah, man, yeah. I mean, it, it's also women live longer than men also because a lot of it, a lot of the jobs that men take are much more dangerous. Well, yeah, than, and for the longest time, men were the only ones going to war. Yeah, that's an interesting concept. I I think what what you have to what a good way to learn from this is. That the value that, you know, I, I find this so often where guys put value on women just because of their attractiveness or because of the opportunity of the fact that they might have sex. And and just the sheer opportunity is something that they put on a pedestal. The fact that this woman is attractive and the woman that is is and she's, you know, she has a womb. Right. And and this is what you like. And I like you said, Harry, there's so much you got to do. You got to figure out. I mean, one of the things I think is crazy is I do a lot of consultations. And what's really interesting is how hard guys are on themselves because of the fact that they're not good. At, they're not good with women, you know, um, and it's it's really kind of unfair because of the fact that anything, I mean, well, there's no training, right? Nobody trains you. There's no education on it. You just go. You got no own. coach. You know what I mean? Like yeah. when we do comedy, it, it's funny. I want you know this weekend I had this young kid who was on, you know, and he's been doing it ten months. So you know, ten months he sucks. I mean, yeah, you just can't be good at it at ten months. Um, and but it's a, it's a situation where. It's easy to say, oh, I've only been doing it 10 months. Or, you know, we know that. I mean, I came, it's like somebody saying I've been only doing it five years is reasonable to say that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah you yeah. know, that that's not even enough time to really actualize the a real understanding of what we do because it's such a moving, growing, kind of living thing. The audience, the audience to find where the audience's laughter is, 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 a, is a living, breathing thing that you have to, jump into this or onto this buck and bronco and then find out how to ride it and we do it so often that we do it with with such uh care and concern with that we almost make it look easy um but you you do have you do have practice you know that when you start doing this the first thing you do is you know that you and what is any 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 vet comic would be like, oh, I did this. And what do you think about this? And what do you think about being a political comic? And every veteran comic says, just shut up and get on stage. I mean, yeah, stage. because if you can't, you can't, there's no tricks to it. It's a, no. it's, it's all longevity. You just got to keep doing it. And eventually you figure it out. But also like when people ask for advice like that, I'm like, well, what I did isn't going to be what you did. Cause right. I started in 2010 that's 13 years ago it Mm -hmm. was wildly different 13 years ago than it is now if you start in 2020 because now you start in 2020 everything's on social media 13 years ago social media wasn't even really a thing like that people were still sending in Mm -hmm. tapes it's like so it's like if i tell you how what i did to become full-time 
it's not going to be the same shit you're going to do. So yeah, don't yeah. even ask me. Just go on stage and figure it out yourself. Yeah, but there is, I think there's, there's, I mean, I don't know. I mean, you've been doing it 13 years. Have you ever given anybody any guidance? I have given people, I, I've given people guidance in the sense that I've told them what I've done and what worked for me. But I always preface it by saying, nigga, it worked for me. It might not work for you. So, because I always tell them, like, no one knows what's going to be the thing that blows you up or gets you to whatever, whatever, whatever. So, I, I, if people ask me, I, it depends on how they ask me, mm -hmm. and I'm kind of reluctant. But if, if they ask me, and they seem like they're genuinely interested. Yeah, I'll try to help. But then there's some people who it's like who've asked me before, and I gave them like a breakdown of how I started working the road. Cause I've been full time for six years. Mm or seven years now, and I've told him like how I started working the road and blah blah blah, and I explain it to him, and then I leave, and I and then next year I'm back at that city because you know you go to a city once or twice a year, so next year I'm back at the city, and the same comic is asking the same questions. Then for those niggas, I'm like, no, I'm like mm -hmm. I gave you the playbook, mm -hmm. well my playbook anyway, a year ago, right. and you have and you're still in the same place, which lets me know you didn't take any of my advice, right. which is fine, you don't have to take it, right, niggas, right. But you're ask. not gonna waste my time and keep. Yeah, asking. yeah, I'm not gonna waste breath on you again. Like I would gave it to you. Well, I mean, look, I get that too, but I also feel like there. Are, I can't teach somebody how to be famous, but I yeah. can teach somebody how to be a good comic. Yeah, like I can, I can teach somebody how to be proficient about comedy. There's just things that I've been watching, and I and I go even when I see the guys who I really like. There's. I can look at what they do and go there's figure out what the criticism is. Not yeah. necessarily even the criticism, but the the thing that I think would make it better. Yeah. You know, um whether it be you know sometimes you get somebody will milk a joke for too long or somebody who doesn't milk it enough doesn't get enough of the juice out of it when they you know a, a topic or whatever somebody that's too you know, takes, you know, the punch to set up to two grand and, you know, anything. But I think you can stand back and look at that. The, my point is, most of the times when you're talking about guys and you're trying to teach them, like, there it's two things that guys are expected to be good at is relationships and sex. And the only way you get good at those things is by practicing. Yeah. I mean, anything you get good at is because you practice. You have to immerse yourself in the, and if you think about this there's no olympic athlete that didn't have a coach so yeah. I, I mean even to a certain extent as a comic i mean d y you know you don't have a direct mentor usually but you still have people around you who will yeah, go yeah yeah you, you have og you have ogs that were like um Stop that helped this. you out the way he has like, yeah yeah 100 yeah, yeah, yeah yeah so so it's two things you have is 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 time invested and a coach. And those are two things that very few guys have. I mean, a lot of dudes grew up in single parented homes. And even if they're not in single parented homes, they're in in, you know, their relationship with their father is not such that he's speaking to, to, to them about this. Or And then if he even if he is half the time, he don't know. He don't know what the fuck he's doing anyway. I mean, it's, yeah. it was just been it's the blind leading luck. the blind a lot of the time. Your dad yeah. didn't know what he was doing, and then he's he's passing you the same advice that got him all fucked up. Yeah, and just and you can see he's not it, it's not working out for him, you know. So it's like what you need is a coach. You gotta have a coach. You yeah. know, you gotta you gotta have the dedication. But you also got to have a coach. You have somebody that. Uh, yeah, other... but the problem is that there ain't there ain't that many good coaches out there. Dante. Right. That's why we're doing this podcast. If we're being honest, I mean, I, it's I just agree. There's, there's nobody really knows what it is because the, the advice is, I mean, the corny jokes you hear at every family barbecue or is like, listen, you know, just just in this relationship. Just remember one thing, honey, you're right. Mm -hmm. Get get the get away from me, man. Leave me yeah. alone. I know yeah, what I'm doing. Thanks. You, thanks, but no you're, thanks. Yes, because what you're going to do is you're going to create a situation. You're going to create an abusive situation. If somebody is not held accountable, then they won't be accountable. And then when they've gone so far in the disrespect that they can't come back, 
um, then you you pop up and you go, hey, I don't like the way yeah. you're treating me. Oh, uh, but wait, quick question, random question. Are both are y'all both y'all single or both of y'all boot up or what are y'all out here doing? I'm, I'm in a, a, uh, Go ahead. Yeah, what'd you say, Dante? Go no, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, I'm in I'm in a long term relationship uh, going on five years now. Okay, I'm, I'm married. So, oh, okay, I didn't know you were yeah, married. Yeah, yeah, I'm married, but I mean that's a whole extensive kind of thing because she's overseas and whatever, whatever. But yeah, yeah. Not, not the point being, um, you know, I will get I'll get consultations from guys who will be very apprehensive about talking to me because they've heard the show and they know that you know you know I, I was a male stripper for 10 years and i ran around and i was hoeing and you know whatever the, whatever the fuck and so they they think that my my uh standard for them is to be bagging a bunch of chicks and you know like smashing and smashing and dashing and stuff and the reality is, is it's a lot of the red pill thinking the the you know, the Kevin Samuels, the this, the that, the whatever, whatever, all of this red pill thinking is um is a mistake, I think. And I think it's a mistake because what you have to do is define what your happiness is. You know, um, if you don't define what your happiness is, then you can't achieve that. And and the happiness that I have or that I'm achieving or that I'm pursuing is not your happiness is with exactly what you're saying is like, I can give you advice, but if you don't do it, man, you know, yeah, yeah you just wasted your time. Yeah. You wasted, and you're wasting my time as well. But so I would never put that kind of, um, I, I don't ever put that kind of constraints on it, but I think that you have to figure out what the, what the, the, the destiny is. I mean, you know, I use this analogy all the time. If you want to take an Uber, there's two things that you need. You need to know your current location and you know that need to know your destination. Both of those things are crucial. Without both of those things, number one, the Uber can't pick you up. And yeah. when you get the Uber, it can't tell you, it can't tell you where you need to go or make yeah. sure that you get there. So, you know, I, I a lot of times I'll, you know, there'll be guys who will be like, Man, I, you know, I'm just not really a player kind of guy, just kind of like one girl. But you may have to date multiple girls to find the one girl. You may have to date multiple girls to to kind of get your weight up so that you understand. You know, it's like doing open mics almost. Yeah. Because if you're not in, in that relationship, you're going to need more. Let's um let's plug your stuff. And then we're going to go to the Patreon. We're going to do a few minutes on the Patreon on the other side. So um, what can we see you? What you got going on real quick? <laughs> Uh, you can see me at, uh, you can follow all my tour dates. Akeemwoods.com has a link to all my tour dates. Uh, tour dates coming up is uh, July 2nd. I will be headlining here after in Seattle. It's a, it's a new comedy club in Seattle. Those tickets are still available. So please come to that show July 2nd. Um, that weekend, I think the 6th through the 8th or something like that, I'm doing Tacoma Comedy comedy club with godfrey um and then i'm headlining the rest of the month i'm doing uh laugh laughing in fort myers july 13th to the 15th and july 20th through the 22nd at snappers and august 30th i'm headline august 20th i'm headlining arlington draft house uh all those tickets on my website at keemwoods.com uh so that's where you can find me instagram is also at keemwoods everything is at keemwoods.com and uh yeah instagram blah 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 Yo, check him out. Real funny dude. Love that dude for real, man. Um, Harry, talk to me. Uh, if you want relationship consultations, you could email me at advice from Harry at gmail.com and we can set up a consultation. And um also my stand up and all my internet clips are on social media. Everything is at Harry Turjanian, TikTok, YouTube, all of that. And join us over uh, at patreon.com slash manschool202 because that's where we're gonna be doing the bonus content and listener mail and also the old episodes. Uh, that everybody's been asking for all the OG episodes of Beige Phillip Man School. Uh, they're all being posted on uh, Patreon.com. So Patreon.com slash Man School 202 if you want to hear the entire archive as we post them. Uh, yo, uh, you can check. Yo, Google me, bitch. You know what it is. Consultations. Dante Click on consult. Yo, follow my um my YouTube page. I'm I'm starting to put content out on my YouTube page. It's Dante Nero. 
is the YouTube page. So you can just Google me, get the, get me there. Um, GYBB, get your balls back. WWDD, what would Dante do? The sexual revolution is being podcasted. Yo, I love y'all. Let's check you on the Patreon side.